Welcome back to the cookie jar. Today we're doing the fifth recipe out of the chocolate chip cookie murder book by Joanna Fluke. Today we will be baking the chocolate covered cherry delight is right here. So for this recipe, you need to preheat the oven to 350, rack in the middle position. You will need one cup of melted butter, that's two sticks, two cups of white sugar, two eggs, half a teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of vanilla, one cup of cocoa powder, three cups of flour, not sifted, two small 10 ounce jars of maraschino cherries. And there is a little note, for those who don't like cherries, substitute well-drained pineapple tidbits using the juice to thin the frosting. You can also use pecan halves or macadamia nuts and thin the frosting with cold coffee or water. If you don't have anything to go on top, just glob the chocolate mixture into the indentions. That's good too. And then you will also need one package of chocolate chips, six ounces, that's two cups, and half a cup of condensed sweetened milk. <laughs> so to make the cookies, you are going to melt the butter and then put in the sugar. And then you're going to let that cool and add eggs. Mix it thoroughly and then add baking powder, baking soda, salt, vanilla, and cocoa, stirring after each addition. Add flour and mix well. Dough will be stiff and a bit crumbly. Drain cherries and remove stems, reserving juice. Pat dough into walnut-sized balls with your fingers. Place on a greased cookie sheet, 12 to a standard sheet. Press down in center with thumb to make a deep indention. If the health board's around, use the bowl of a spoon small spoon. Place one cherry in each indention. In a saucepan over simmering water, double boiler, combine the chocolate chips and the condensed milk. Heat on low until the chips are melted. You can also do this in the microwave, but you'll have to keep zapping it to keep it from hardening. Add approximately eighth a cup of the reserved cherry juice and stir it to a thick sauce. If sauce is too thick, add more juice in small increments. Test it with a teaspoon. If it doesn't glob off, it's too thick. Spoon the sauce over the center of each cookie, just enough to cover each cherry. Make sure it doesn't drip down the sides. Bake at 350 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes. Let cool on cookie sheet for two minutes, then remove to a rack to finish cooling. At the bottom, there's an anecdote that says, a plate of these should be in every psychiatrist's office. Two chocolate covered cherry delights will lift anyone out of a depression. So, that is what we are going to be doing today, and I will meet you in the kitchen in just a minute. So we're in the kitchen now. I've got my butter melted in our mixing bowl, which took about 40 seconds in the microwave, and then I just stirred up any remaining chunks till it melted. We have the rest of our ingredients already measured out and waiting. The oven's preheating to 350, and let's get started. Okay, so we've got our bowl on our mixer, and we just need to add our two cups of sugar into there and mix that up. Now I melted this earlier, so it's already pretty cool. So it shouldn't take very long and I should be able to mix in all the other ingredients pretty quickly. All right, so we mixed it up for a couple of minutes and it's where we are. So the next thing we're gonna do is add our two eggs. It doesn't say to add them one at a time or anything, so I'm just gonna plop them both in and we're going to mix this up until we don't see any more loose eggs. I gave it just about 30 seconds to a minute. And when I don't see any more little bits, we start adding our baking powder. The baking soda. So you're gonna need both in this recipe. The salt. the vanilla and the cocoa powder is the last thing to go in. Ah, the cloud. Okay, so let's get this going slowly. As we get a little cocoa powder cloud. Now it's starting to look like brownie mix. Stop this for a second and go down the sides and the beaters. 
Just make sure nothing gets lost and unseparated. Mixed? Lost and separated. We'd want it all mixed. Like I guess I always go down the beaters just because it likes to trap stuff in this little cracks. And we don't want stuff not to be mixed in because then it doesn't bake right. Now I'm just going to give this one more spin around. All right. And now we add the flour and we're going to mix that up as well. Okay. Now it doesn't say to add in increments, so we're just going to give the whole lot a go. All three cups of it. Okay. And like we did with the cocoa powder, we'll give it little bursts until it's mainly mixed, just so we don't get any flour flying all over the kitchen. Because one, that gives you less accurate measurement. And two, I don't want to clean it up. <laughs> So, I don't see any more specks of flour. This is very crumbly. It is very stiff. I think I'm gonna have to hand mix it because I see some flour sitting on the side over here, not mixed up. This is not one I would recommend hand mixing. It, it, it gave the mixer quite a run for its money. So unless you've got really strong arms, <laughs> I would I would not attempt to hand mix this because it's very dense. Dense is the word I want. But we are done, I believe, with this guy. So it says drain cherries and reserve the juice. So what I did this morning when I set out all of my ingredients for it, I took a large bowl and a strainer I have and I just dumped both sets of, or both jars of the cherries in that way. The cherries are drained. They're for the most part dry and I have all the juice left over for what we, the frosting. So it says to pat dough into walnut sized balls. So we, or I, will be using my handy dandy cookie scooper as soon as I figure out where I put it. Okay, so I put away my mixer cause we're done with it for now. I found my handy dandy cookie scoop. So it says we are just scooping up the cookies, putting them on our trays and then putting it little dent. I'm using the back of my teaspoon because I feel like that makes a nice little hole for the cherry to sit into. So we just scoop it up. It, it does look a lot like brownie mix. I am actually going to do a tray full and then I'm going to do the holes in the cherry fills. It just seems more well planned out that way to me. But okay. So these cookies are actually mentioned a couple times throughout the book. She gives some to Herb for information. She gives some to her mom. She, yeah, apparently she made the recipe in the book for inspiration from her mother because apparently her father used to give her mother chocolate covered ch cherries when she was mad at him. So little tidbit of the book and where these came from. Okay. Now we have Okay. So we just take it and push it right down into the center. I 
I try not to go too deep with it because I don't want it cracking the cookie and I don't want it to go to the bottom. This seems to starting to stick. Oh no. I might have to wipe it off every couple. <laughs> yeah. About every third one I gotta wipe the back. But it does make a nice little hole, just the right size for what I feel would be good for a cherry to sit into. All right. And then we're just gonna pop one cherry into each hole. Now I know we're going to be putting frosting on top of them. So I'm trying to keep them pretty centered. Some of them I think I need to make a little deeper. Okay, let me guys show you. Here is one tray with the holes and the cherries inside. I'm just going to finish scooping up the rest and getting the cherries, and then we will move on to the frosting. So we've made about 46 of the cookies. We did have some cherries left over about a quarter of a jar. I'm just gonna toss them back in the jar and put them in the fridge for another project. So I have the double boiler on the stove heating up <coughs> and that should take just a few minutes and we'll move on. Okay. So it's just about to the simmering stage. You've got some little bubbles coming up. The top of this, if you do have a double boiler, remember the water should not be touching it, just the steam. And it says to this, we are going to add the chocolate chips and the condensed milk. Okay, so, so put it in there. Get as much as I can. Okay, so. You can already see that it's starting to melt on the bottom. Just kind of keep tossing it around, trying to make sure I hit all the bottom so that it doesn't burn. And the condensed milk is mixing into the melted chocolate. Don't think this will take more than a minute or two. It's melting pretty quick. I am actually, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, using the semi-sweet today. I just figure between the maraschino cherries being sweet and adding the cherry juice into this and the sweet and condensed milk is super sweet. I just thought that the milk would be too much. So. I think we are melted. So it says we want to add eighth of a cup of cherry juice to this. I'm just going to measure into this same one that we used for the condensed milk. It's got about an eighth of a cup. I'm gonna add that in. Now, I don't know why you can't just add the cherry juice in with the condensed milk. That seems a bit strange to be once it's already mix to mix in more ingredients but that is what it says to do so that is what we did now i'm just going to turn this down even lower because i th think we're supposed to leave it on the stove as we spoon it out right, so now we need to spoon it out onto the cherries. I think I'm gonna start with half a teaspoon and see if that is enough for it to work. So that's what we got with the half a teaspoon. Just kind of globbing it up there and hoping it falls in the right place. Trying to smooth it around. I don't wanna use more than half a teaspoon because the holes themselves are only a teaspoon. 
and I don't want to overfill them because it says not to let it run down the sides. So I'm trying to be very careful about how much gets on the cherry and in the cookie. And I don't want to run out before all of them have a coating. We um for reference, I do not recommend using your finger to get it out because it's really hot. If you are using the double boiler, I recommend stirring it occasionally. It's not, it's kind of thickening a little bit, but if I stir it up, it goes back to being loose. So now that I've done quite a few of them, I think we're definitely gonna have some more left over so we can go over some of them. These are starting to look really yummy. I'm excited for these. Thinking about it, these do still have to bake. So it's very possible that while these are in the oven, the chocolate will melt down the sides. I don't know if I am actually going to add any more of the filling. And we're on our last tray now. I wonder if I use the back of a spoon to get this out, if that would work better. Oh yeah. I think I found a better way to do this. I think covering these cherries has taken the longest of these cookies so far. Here are the final product, all covered in chocolate. So we'll pop them in the oven for about 10 minutes and then we'll cool them for about two minutes and then we'll put them on a wire rack to finish cooling. I will see you guys when we are done. So here we are, we've got all of them baked. They don't really look that astoundingly amazing, but I think they're gonna taste pretty good. Here's the front, the back. Chocolate shit, well, chocolate cookies and chocolate cakes are really hard to tell when they're done. So, these, they seem pretty good. Okay. Mm. Mm. I took the whole cherry. I didn't mean to, but these are pretty good. Yeah, I think I definitely think the semi-sweet chips were the right way to go with this. They're not overly sweet and you get a lot of the cherry flavor in the frosting as well. My only disappointment is I meant to bite the cherry in half because I knew there was no way I'd be able to eat the whole cookie in one bite. Now I have no more cherry and I still have half a cookie left. <laughs> so that's a little disappointing, but I think I'll live. I actually really like these. They're kind of crunchy. The people who love the edge brownie pieces, you know, they're like, those are like the best things for them. These are their cookies. That is exactly what this cookie base is. It is literally like a brownie, but the whole cookie outside is an, is an edge piece. So I think if you know somebody who really like is all about them brownie edges, these cookies, whether you put the cherry in there or not, cause it did say if you didn't have anything to put inside of the dent that you could just put the frosting in. I think this would be a really good choice for them, those people. But this is this is this one's a winner. <laughs> so I hope you guys try these at home yourself. They weren't very complicated. The longest part of the process was getting the chocolate into the cookies. And I ended up figuring out a way to do that at the end with just taking a spoon and scooping it in and then kind of using the end to coat the cherry. But next week we are going to be doing old fashioned sugar cookies. I have made these before. We will see you guys next week if you're interested in those. Toodaloo.